Okay, so I think most of you could figure out this problem if you had a piece of paper, pencil, certainly a calculator, but could you do this basic math problem in your head? Well, let's go ahead and find out. And the problem here is parentheses 5 eighths minus 1 fourth squared. All right, so again, the only rules here is just to use your brain. And if you have the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. And then we're gonna talk about how we can uh, use some kind of mental focus to concentrate and get the answer to this question. All right, but uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, see the correct answer. And the correct answer is nine over 64. All right, so how'd you do? Well, if you got this right, we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A+, plus, A100%, and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that you are a professional certified expert in the area of doing mental calculations. That's what we're really talking about here, mental math. Now, why would we want to uh, kind of practice mental math, mental math? Well, you know, some of you might be saying, well, I can do math. I just need a piece of paper and a pencil, and I'm not going to make this any harder than I have to, right, by just trying to do all these calculations in your brain. And as a general rule, yes, we want to use materials like uh, a paper, a pencil, a calculator to assist us. But let's suppose you don't have uh, these materials around, and you got to do some quick calculations in your brain. Well, that's important as well. Okay. And the only way you're going to get good at this is to practice. So don't feel so bad if you didn't get this right. You just have to, you know, practice focusing and you may need some uh, uh, basic strategies. But what I want to make sure uh, that you don't have is the, um, you know, math skills to solve this problem. So let's go ahead and get started right now. And there's basically three skills that we're going to have to understand in order to do this problem in our brain or even on a piece of paper or pencil. So let's just kind of quickly review the skills. Okay, so the first is we're gonna to have to understand the order of operations and the order of operations in mathematics is uh, basically the correct order when we see different operations. So here we have subtraction, we have parentheses, we have powers, we need to understand the correct order to do this problem. And uh, of course, I'm gonna get into this in just one second, but uh, this is the first skill that we need to understand, okay, the order of operations. Now, clearly, we're going to have to be able to deal with fractions because we're going to have to subtract some, uh, subtract some fractions, and then we're going to have to be able to understand how to find powers, right, because we're going to be squaring something up here. So these are the three basic skills that we're going to have to um, uh, em uh, employ to get this correct. So let's just review these skills and we'll talk about how we can kind of mentally, you know, uh, do this prom. But you can't do this prom whether on a piece of paper or pencil or in your brain if you don't know these skills. But let's go ahead and start here and talk about PEMDAS. So here is my uh, kind of, you know, my image of people concentrating. It may be a very poor little sketch, but hey, you know, we try to keep things light here on this YouTube channel. And here is this person thinking, all right, I got this problem. I got to do this in my brain. Now I got to think about the order of operations because that's what that YouTube math man was telling me. Now, what is the order of operations? So in mathematics, things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, uh, even parentheses and powers, things like this. These are things that we have to uh, be able to identify and uh, do in the right order. So these things right here are called mathematical operators. So uh, again, we have this thing called the order of operations. So I don't want to turn this into a full lesson on the order of operations, but I will do a quick review with you. And PEMDAS here is an acronym that uh, tells us how to employ the correct order of operations. All right, so there's not too many operations to do in this problem, but it's still you know, a good uh, opportunity for us to have a teachable moment and review the correct over order of operations. So uh, this thing is a checklist. It starts from left to right, 
and we always start with P. Okay, so P is parentheses. Now here we do have parentheses. So anytime you see parentheses or brackets or these kind of brackets, these are called grouping symbols. This is where uh, we're going to start. Okay, so obviously uh, we have some parentheses. We're going to go there first. Now I'm going to um, kind of abbreviate this order of operations. There's, there's more to this and certainly you want to practice this far uh, more than I'm kind of explaining. This is just a quick overview. Okay, so that's what P stands for. E stands for powers, like two to the third power. If you have two to the third power, this little number up here is called the exponent. This big number down here is called the base. So the entire thing is a power. So E really stands for exponents, but you could think of it as powers. And then M and D, A and S, this is multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. But here's the deal. You're not going to just go in a strict manner from left to right and go, oh, multiplication, and then division. Well, what you have to do is look at these as groups. You'll do multiplication or division, whatever you see first from left to right. So if you have this, you'll do it this way. If you have this, you'll do it this way because division comes first from left to right. Same thing with addition and subtraction. Okay, so that's a quick overview of the order of operations. So clearly we have some parentheses. We're going to have to work inside of the parentheses first. Okay. Now that should hopefully have been obvious to a lot of you, but you might be taking this step without realizing why you're doing it. And what we want to do is put aside any guessing uh, here. We want to have absolute certainty that we're doing this problem uh, correctly. Okay. So this is going to bring us to our next skill, which of course is how to subtract fractions. So here is what we have to do. We have parentheses, so we have to go inside of the parentheses, and we're going to have to uh, work on this problem. And we can't leave the parentheses until we're done with uh, all the math inside of the parentheses. So we have 5 eighths minus 1 fourths. Now, how do we subtract fractions? Well, you can't add or subtract fractions unless you have the same denominator. For example, if I had 3 fifths plus 1 fifths, I can add these because the denominators are the same. And the way you add or subtract fractions when you have the same denominator is you simply add the respective or add or subtract the respective numerators. In this case, the answer would be four fifths. But here we have a problem. These denominators are different, so we have to find the lowest common denominator. Okay, now if some of you are like, oh yes, I forgot that. Well, you know, I'm gonna give you a couple quick suggestions, but uh, uh, adding and subtracting fractions is really a sore, sub, a sore spot for a lot of people. They just kind of forget this, and it's understandable because, you know, when you haven't been doing math for a while, you know, you lose these skills, but I'll give you some suggestions if you want to improve. All right, so what is the LCD here? What's the lowest common denominator? Well, hopefully you said eight, and if you said eight, you would be absolutely right. Now, some of you uh, right now be like, wow, you're doing a lot of, uh, you know, thinking here and a lot of explanation for, you know, a problem that we have to do in our brain. Well, this right, problem right here should be pretty easy to do, okay? So if the LCD is 8, that means we have to, uh, this fraction has 8 as its denominator, but this one we have to uh, turn into an 8. And how can we turn a 4 into 8? Easy, we just multiply uh, both the numerator and denominator by 2, Okay. So that is going to give us this fraction right here, 5 over 8 minus 2 over 8. Now we have the same denominators. So we know that our denominator is 8, so we have to just concentrate mentally. You just say, take it one thing at a time. Like I have 5 eighths minus 2 eighths. So 5 minus 2 is 3. So this is 3 over 8. And in your brain, what you have to do is concentrate and just say, okay, this is the number, 3 over 8 hold that number in my brain because that is the result of doing this fraction problem. So you kind of forget the fraction problem as long as you can just kind of hold that three eighths in your brain. But we only have one more step and that of course is to square uh, the result of what was inside of the parentheses. So in your brain, you're like, okay, I just did this five eighths. And uh, you know, one rule here, by the way, is you know, you can keep looking at the problem. When you're doing a mental calculation, and I didn't say that, you know, here, you just, you know, look at the problem, then hold the problem in your memory. You can look at the problem. You just can't use a piece of paper, pencil, or calculator. So, you know, you're concentrating, you're staring at this thing. You're like, all right, just figure this out. Uh, this is now a three-eighths. Okay, so three-eighths squared. So, you know, don't kind of expel 
any more um, kind of memory uh, here to figure out what, uh, let me fix my little pin here, to figure out what this is equal to, right? We're just going to stop looking at this and just concentrate concentrate our mind's eye on this. Now, all of our brains work uh, differently, but here's the thing. If you want to be successful in anything, especially math, it is this word right here that you must master. Focus. This is the hardest thing for all of us, you know, because we live in such a distracted world. And if you're trying to learn math or anything else, if you're constantly being distracted, you know, you're not going to, uh, you know, be efficient at what you're trying to learn. And you may not even be successful. So if you want to really improve at anything, you really have to uh, work on your focus. And that's why doing mental math calculations is very helpful. It really does help with your focus. Now, before we take a look at this uh, last step here, some of you might be saying, you know what, I need some help on uh, fractions or just basic math. Well, I'm going to give you a, a suggestion right now because I'm going to ask you to consider subscribing to my channel. This really does help me out and it helps me achieve my goal, which is to help people like you, okay? People that are interested in math or uh, people that need assistance in mathematics. This kind of grows my YouTube classroom. And the only way I can get more people into my little uh, virtual classroom is by the algorithm saying, hey, you know what? People are subscribing to his channel. It must be okay. Now, if you're going to subscribe, make sure to hit that notification bell as well uh, so you can get my latest videos. But on my channel, you'll find 2,000 plus videos from basic math to advanced math, uh, like calculus and everything in between. Now, one thing I wanted to um, uh, state here is that I just came up with a new course. It's called uh, math skills rebuilder. Okay, it's a math skills rebuilder course, and I specifically uh, came up with this course to uh, give people an opportunity to kind of relearn all the math they forgot uh, or all the math they never really kind of learned uh, right. You'll find a link to it in the description below. But if you're like, oh, I'm rusty on fractions, or you know, I want to learn more about algebra or whatever the case is, check out that course. That course I made uh, for those uh, people that want to kind of you know, uh, kind of revamp their lost and forgotten math skills. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish this up because all we have to do is figure out what 3 eighths squared is. And anything squared is what? Well, we have to take what's inside the, of the squared and multiply it by uh, itself. So we have to figure this out, 3 eighths times 3 eighths. Now, again, we're not thinking about the rest of this problem because our mind can only focus on one or two things at most at once. So if we have 3 eighths times 3 eighths, let's focus on the numerator, right? Well, actually just review how to multiply fractions. So what you're going to do is you're going to multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So 3 eighths times 3 eighths, you're like, all right, 3 times 3, that's 9, and 8 times 8 is 64. And you kind of do that a couple times in your brain just to make sure you have the right calculations. But this is how you get the answer, 9 over 64. And this problem, I don't think is unrealistic for a lot of you to be able to do. Now, if you didn't get this right, but you understood the math, you're like, well, I understood all the steps. I just couldn't do this in my brain. No big deal. Okay. Again, you know, the reason why I make little problems like this is so you can have an opportunity to practice doing mental mathematics. It's very good for your brain. Uh, there's been a lot of studies out there in terms of memory, you know, things that uh, counter, you know, your your uh, kind of mental, not mental health, but your brain health, you know, like our memory or, or how sharp we can be, especially as we age. If you don't use your brain, it's like a muscle, okay? So doing little, you know, uh, puzzles and things is very, very helpful. And mental math, I think, falls into that category as well. All right. So with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.